So clinical trials that are ongoing right now, right, in this, um, or, or existing therapies that are ongoing right now in this space, right, are either situations where you have a known mechanism of inflammation, right, and where we're borrowing medications that control immune responses that have been developed for other more common disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or um, psoriasis, and then we apply them. Um, and that's the case, for example, for a cardiac syndrome, where there's a significant contribution of the immune system to the disease, or, right, they are genetic therapies, right, or what we call more commonly molecular therapies. So for example, in Alexander disease, there's a publicly established and known trial where they're down-regulating the, the, the protein that's produced um, with a mutation by down-regulating the mRNA that's made within the cell with a technique called antisense oligonucleotide. So effectively, you match the, the mutated protein or the mutated um, mRNA, right, with uh, an antisense that sort of blocks it from ever being translated into a protein. So you decrease the amount of the toxic protein that's being made and you hopefully might, um, mouse work suggests that you might mitigate the, the disease. And then finally, there's a series of other disorders that are amenable to um, to gene therapy sometimes with a bone marrow transplant, right? Um, and uh, and those, those are some therapeutic trials that are ongoing. Or finally, there are some disorders where you have enzymes that are missing and they're finding ways to replace those enzymes um, in the cell um, as well. Okay. Hmm. Myelin restoration, right? Which would, you know, involve basically being able to implant healthy cells in the brain that are able to do the job of making myelin, right? Um, are probably not yet mature enough. So cell-based therapies are probably not yet mature enough to really think about in a concrete clinical way. Those things are being done in animal models, but you know, there's a very big difference between the, the brain size of a laboratory animal like a mouse, right? And, and the scale of a human. So there's real scalability issues there right now, and also knowledge issues about how to make sure those cells when they get to the right place, do the right job. Um, and then other myelin restoration approaches where you promote the remyelination are also still not really mature technologies. There is some hope though, that if you can stop a pathologic process, since a lot of these disorders are happening in childhood and childhood is a time of active myelination, that you may be able to allow the brain to do its job without the interference of the disease process. And then it's also important to remember that you know, while you don't have uh, recovery so much of like neurons, which are the thinking cells in the brain, or at least not sort of in, in a, at a large scale, right? Myelination is a homeostatic process that's constantly ongoing actually in the brain. And so there is some, some uh, potential for, for the brain itself to, to, to myelinate if you were to stop a pathologic process. Mm -hmm.